Hello everyone, this is Adarsh Jain from Duplexis and we have with us Mr. Rajiv Khandelwal, the Executive Director of Ajivika Bureau. Welcome Mr. Rajiv. Thank you. How are you doing? How was the summit today? Very well. It, is, it, was, a, it was intense. <laughs> it was fun and intense, which is always a good combination. Uh, can you tell us about Ajivika Bureau? Uh, what's the vision behind it? What's the mission? Can you tell us about the work that you do? Uh, in a nutshell, we uh, are a non-profit. Ajivika Bureau is headquartered in uh, Udaipur in South Rajasthan. And it provides uh, services and solutions to a very large number of uh, fairly quite vulnerable migrant workers who go from rural areas to urban labor markets of Gujarat and Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. So we do a number of things. We started with an ID card. We have a skilling program that is helping young people who are out of school and who are not, who are whose wages are stagnating, helping them, you know, do better in employment. But more significantly, we have a large legal aid program that is uh, helping people be protected from wage losses, from wage thefts, from kind of difficult work arrangements, from exploitative kind of contractual kind of you know systems that they get become part of when they migrate. So we really our work looks at various facets of labor when it moves from rural areas to urban areas, and we do. Other than that, financial services, healthcare, you know, uh, social security activities that are focusing on this kind of segment of vulnerable population. All right, uh, Rajiv, uh, you know, hyper urbanization is a big issue today. And how do you think this is complicating human rights? Can you throw some insights out of your experiences to us? So I guess urbanization, like a lot of uh, unplanned kind of you know developments in our country is creating greater divisions okay. and polarization uh, and we understand it or see it from the point of view of access and services that migrant workers from rural areas who come to cities whether or not they enjoy those or not enjoy those are they becoming active and you know, able participants in the urban kind of space. And I think urbanization is kind of becoming exclusionary mm -hmm. of a very large population that is probably not even there to stay forever. Mm -hmm. A lot of migrant workers who come to cities are actually seasonal migrants. Mm -hmm. They don't wish to relocate permanently. Their mm -hmm. homes are mm -hmm. in villages. They're mm -hmm. here to work mm -hmm. for survival mm -hmm. and for being gainfully employed. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of it which is achieved but in very poor conditions which compromises uh, wages in conditions of work but also their fundamental rights mm. as citizens mm. and as workers so i think urbanization is creating new new polarization also okay. you know, which is which is uh, uh, recreating what was happening in the villages similar situation is now arising in cities cities as well uh, Rajiv, what do you think uh, governments should do to uh, at the policy front to you know help resolve such issues? So government can begin, I guess, by uh, enforcing the laws that it is supposed to abide by, mm -hmm. by creating better regulation, by bringing more data and more vigil to the conditions of work that people are forced to be in, okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, whether mm -hmm. migrant or local because of the very large nature of our informal economy, because of the sheer size of it, um, it becomes really important for government to play the role that mm. industry does not, mm. right? And what is the role? It is the role of ensuring that people have decent wages, good living conditions, True. social security, health care, and stability you know, in employment. Now, all of this becoming, because for people who are part of the informal workforce, none of these things are guaranteed, mm. right? Certainly not by the employers or True. industry that employs them. And so I guess the government has to play a more active and a more uh, you know, dedicated role in protecting this, the rights and entitlements of the workers who come into the cities. Okay. Yeah? Uh, a lot of urban planning and urban governance actually misses out on this population altogether. Okay. When they plan for services, they don't they don't think about mm -hmm. you know workers mm -hmm. who are coming in for short periods of time or for long periods of mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. They essentially think about people who have permanent right, mm -hmm. right? Not those who are who are here temporarily, but who 
play a very significant part of the urban, you know, they contribute to the urban economy mm. in a very mm. significant way. I think governments can bring more attention to enforcing the laws and rules that they have themselves created for protection of the workforce. I hope your voice is heard through our platform too. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, moving next, uh, we would like to know, uh, is, the, is, is there a change in mindset required? There is a lot of aversion towards migrant population amongst people. Do you think there is a change required? Absolutely. I think the change will have to come from uh, citizens of, you know, large urban or small. I mean, they'll have to come from citizens first, mm -hmm. right? Who can start thinking and start recognizing the enormous contribution that migrant workers are making to their economy, their households, their industry, right? So rather than this becoming just a kind of an adversarial relationship in which people are seen as competitors of space, of, you know, resources, they then become, you know, participants in the same experience, in the same kind of success story that urban mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. are supposed to enjoy, right? And I think that mindset is not an easy one to change because I think it is very deeply embedded in our, in our, in our kind of consciousness. There is this kind of alienation or otherization of mm. the poorer communities, you know, they, they, there are all kinds of stereotypes about how people are lazy or they don't, they don't rise to the opportunities that are being given to them or they are trying to, you know, take things away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that needs a more fundamental kind of correction at a much early stage in our lives where we stop looking at rural, migrant, poor communities as, you know, as problematic. Correct. Yeah. So I think that mindset is, I think, has to change very fundamentally. Mm -hmm. Are these, uh, do you think, uh, I mean, what do you think summits like ICEP, uh, how do they help in identifying solutions for such problems like migration? I think the good thing is that ICEP is a very diverse community. So people, and there is a strong kind of a social, sense of social purpose that mm -hmm. brings us all together, mm -hmm. right? So people are able to get out of their own sector or their own theme and address challenges that other people are facing mm -hmm. with a sincere kind of uh, application and and seriousness, right? So they're not limited by the work they do. The ICEP community is not limited by the work it does. They are, in fact, they use it to see what can be done in the context of other people's work. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a unique kind of a, uh, a you know, feature of this community mm -hmm. that people come from healthcare, from education, from this, that, and the other, but they bring it together then when they're here and they are part of a larger social collective. I think that's that's what it, I think is really important okay. and significant as far as ICEP is concerned. Great. So what was your favorite part of the summit today? Well, I enjoyed my conversation with my panel. Okay. I had been told to, uh, you know, follow a certain structure, do challenges, this, that. And on the spot, I said, you know what, I'm going to have a conversation with these people. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have a chat which on topics that I've been thinking about exploring. So... I think I got away with that. Okay. You know, <laughs> so I enjoyed that. I also enjoyed the discussions on the table, uh -huh. you know, in which there were students, there was this whole heterogeneous kind of group. I really enjoyed that. Right. Great. So the last question, uh, well, how do you think technology can play a role in addressing problems pertaining to migration or hyper urbanization? Well, technology certainly, uh, it is, uh, as I, as is true for many other things, it is uh, necessary, but but not sufficient condition, right? It is an ena enabler, not a solution unto itself. I think the problems that migrant workers are facing are, and indeed other informal workers are facing, have to do with wages, mm -hmm. with living conditions, with conditions of work. And I'm not sure technology is the first solution there. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think it is in what business and, and governments collectively decide to do mm -hmm. and those kind of things need to be corrected before we think about fintech and about you know cross kind of you know joining the dots right. on the technology frontier. Right. So I am a little bit of a techno skeptic okay. as far as uh, 
uh, you know the conditions of migrant workers are concerned. Sure. Which is not to say that it will not help, mm -hmm. but it is should it is not the first thing that comes to my mind. Sure. Thank you so much, Rajiv. I hope <laughs> your voices are heard uh, by the government and the people, and uh, we hope that more people like you join the workforce and help migrant population. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.